Hey guys, I hope you are doing well today. Um, so this today's video is a little bit different. I don't normally do an intro for my vlogs, but I kind of wanted to do one today. I'm trying something new. So um, anyways, uh, back in January, so just a little over a month ago now, um, about a month and a half ago, we went to Sweden and it was so much fun. Honestly, like, had the best time. Um, this isn't my first like Nordic experience. Like I've been to Iceland, um, I've been to Alaska. Not that Alaska is Nordic, but um, you know what I mean. Anyways, so um, we had such a good time. We did dog sledding, we went snowmobiling, we saw the Northern Lights, we stayed in one of those little bubble huts. We had a lot of reindeer. It was epic. So I'm going to kind of jump right in and show you how it went. So I am about to go to Sweden. So I'm prepping, I started packing last night, um, but then we went out to dinner, so I stopped. <laughs> um, so I'm finishing up my packing now. I, um, I'm only going for a week, but I'm taking three bags. Yeah, I didn't want to, and I didn't want to take even this big bag, but winter clothes are bulky. Also, we're going to Stockholm, and then we're going up like north, north, like almost as far north in Sweden as you can go. Um, and so I have a lot of like winter clothes that I need to pack, like heavy undergarment stuff. And then also I wanted um, to have like some stuff to go out in Copenhagen. So there's like a, or not Copenhagen, excuse me, Stockholm. So there's kind of a lot happening. Um, and then I have my camera bag and then my purse. So yeah, <laughs> um, but I'm excited because I got a new tripod. Finally, it's been like a year without one, I'm struggling. But I figured since we're seeing the Northern Lights, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, I'm gonna need a tripod to capture those um, because yeah, you just can't do it without a tripod. It's literally impossible because you have to have such a long um, shutter time. So yeah, finishing up packing, it is like, what time is it? It's 9.45, my flight is at 2.45. I need to be at the airport around one. Tested negative for COVID, I got my vaccine, so yeah all ready to go. Actually, like, it's weird. The rules in Sweden right now, you don't even need the vaccine entry. You just need the negative COVID test. So that's interesting. Um, like, why did I even get the vaccine? Just kidding. Um, so yeah, really excited for that. I'll kind of show you guys now what I am packing. Okay, so this is the jacket that I got. It's Helly Hansen. As you can tell, I almost like exclusively purchased one the gear that's Helly Hansen. You'll see a lot of that in my bag and on my stories. I just love this brand. But it's a nice, like, heavy winter parka. I am mad, though, because I ordered it online. And I ordered black, and this is clearly blue. But, oh well. That'll do. Oh, also, let's see here. These are my boots that I got. Sorry, boxes from that I need to return and stuff. But look at how cute these are. Like, literally, I am dying at how stinking cute these Sorrells are. So I got the these because they match, but then this is blue and not black. So that's irritating. Um, oh well. But yeah, you guys always get to see all of the good stuff. Sorrell, like the best winter boot brand. I have Sorrells and I have Columbia boots. Um, the reason I had to buy all sorts of new stuff for Sweden is because all of my winter gear is in America. I like literally, I thought about bringing it and then I was like, no, COVID, I'm probably not gonna be traveling that much this winter. Like there's no point, I live in Spain, why do I need um, massive amounts of winter gear? And so I just left it all in Florida and told my mom, like I was like, when you guys drive out to Colorado, will you just take it out there for me? Cause I know it's gonna be going to Colorado at some point over the winter. And I was like, well, that's where I'm gonna need it. There's no point in lugging it back and forth across the world. So yeah, and now I'm going to Sweden. Um, so that plan kind of backfired on me, but the amount of luggage and luggage I would have paid to get all of that stuff over here probably cost as much as buying all of the new gear, honestly. Um, plus I wanted Sorrells for a while and now I have a nice new parka. My, all of my like winter jackets actually are like light colored, like my ski jacket's white and then my, um, my big puffy parka from Mammoth is also white. I love, it's like a silver, like a dark, like a light gray. Um, but I love that thing. It is so warm and so cozy. Oh, so I'm sad that's not gonna be going with me. Um, and then my boots are white, so I needed like a darker, um, like a darker, uh, I needed a 
darker winter wardrobe because all I have is light stuff. If anything, I know I have another, I have like a burgundy, like short puffy jacket as well. But I think that's it. Yeah, everything's like lighter colors. So yeah, glad to be um, finally going to the docks off. Okay, so I have made it to the airport. Double backpacking it because I'm a cool kid like that. Also, my glasses are fogging up something savage, but I'm out of contacts until I go back to America. So yay. Um, but the guy nearly gave me a heart attack. I, t I gave him my COVID test and he was like, oh, well, to enter Switzerland, you need, um, you need to have it, it has to be within 24 hours. And I, and mine's like 26 hours old or something like by the time I land. And I was like, even just for transiting. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, well, shit, is there like a place at the airport I can go get another test? Um, and he was like, hold on, let me just double check. And then he was like, oh no, sorry, that rules for Germany, which I don't even think that's correct. Anyways, but um, so I didn't have to do that. And I'm just transiting through Switzerland and then landing in Sweden. Then he ended up with Sweden. And then he like pretty much just waved me through because he saw my discharge book, my seafarer's book. Man, that document is like gold in the airport. Um, so yeah, so I'm through and now I'm going through security. So I made it successfully through security and I just had a whopper from Burger King because I don't know, I just love going to Burger King in the airport and I got a Diet Coke with it because I also guilty pleasure Diet Coke. I like never have soda. So airports are the time. Um, there's nobody around me, so I'm gonna take this off for a second. Um, but yeah, so I'm heading to Sweden. I'm very excited flying into Stockholm. When I first arrived in Sweden, the first thing I did was fly into Stockholm and go to one of my dear friend Amelie's house. The reason for this trip was because basically every year one of my close friends, Claire, who I was friends with when I was living in Florence, um, she has a big birthday trip every year. Um, we didn't get to do one last year because of COVID, so this year was kind of our first trip um, in two years. Um, back in 2020, right before the pandemic hit, was the last time we all did one, and we all went to Morocco, and like 17 of us went, and it was so much fun. But anyways, I digress. Uh, this year, we went to Sweden. So after just a couple of nights in Stockholm waiting for all the girls to get in. I had to fly in earlier than everybody else because of uh, flights from Palma are just ridiculous. Um, we flew to Karuna, a really, really small mining town in like the very far north of Sweden within the Arctic Circle. Um, so anyway, so we flew all the way up to Karuna um, and we stayed for just a couple of nights three nights, I believe, in this bubble tent. So the whole top was completely clear so you could see out in case the northern lights came. And there were two heaters in there. It was very rustic. Let me just say this. It was on a dog farm, very rustic. Um, there was not like a whole lot of facilities. We didn't have a bathroom in our tent. So we had to like walk, you know, two miles down the road in the snow to go to the bathroom. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, but we had such a good time there. The property was really beautiful, just out in the middle of the wilderness. Um, there were dogs on property, so that was really cute. And also there was a hot tub. So the first night we didn't have anything planned. So we all got in the hot tub. We were the only people staying there that night. So we all got in the hot tub and decided to wait for the Northern Lights. Um, blasted Les Mis and Celine Dion. Had a great old time. And the Northern Lights finally came and it was amazing. They were so bright. This was my second time seeing them. And this is definitely the brighter of both two times. And it was just so magical. We loved it. Um, I had so much fun. Probably stayed up to like 1 a.m. just staring at the Northern Lights, like screaming every time they came. It was wonderful. So the next day we went dog sledding and we had such a good time. So this would be my, again, my second time dog sledding. Um, and we, this time, like the last time I went, I was just on my sleigh by myself with our guide. This time there were four of us on the sleigh, like all front to back with our guide. We had, I believe like 12 dogs pulling us um because you know we're a lot of a lot of weight us girls um so the dogs were all pulling us we did about a two-hour trip we stopped in a traditional 
um, Inuit hut of the Sami people. Um, and we had like a coffee and a tea and sat around the fire just to warm up um, and give the dogs a little break. Not that the dogs need a break. Um, if you've ever considered dog sledding but think it might be inhumane to the dogs or something, they absolutely love it. Like they are bred for this. Like they are working dogs and have been their entire lives. And they like they get so excited to go dog sledding and they will get really sad if they're not the one picked to run. Um, and they are very good about rotating them. Um, the guy who's our guide, like he does the Iditarod race and all that stuff. So they take such good care of these dogs. Like these dogs are far more spoiled than I am as a human. So definitely do not fear. Um, they're really well treated. So a lot of what happened after that, we went snowmobiling, saw more of the Northern Lights. Um, there was just so much snow um, on the ground. We'd actually, when we went snowmobiling, we had so much snow coming down. It was crazy. Like we were all completely frozen and we did not think that we were going to be able to see the Northern Lights that night. But we ended up, as soon as we got done with our snowmobiling tour, the lights opened up, like the sky just opened up, the lights came out, and we were able to see them again on our last night there. And it was just really, really special. So we had such a good time. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little vlog about Sweden. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed my little rant about Sweden. We, again, like we had such a good time. It was really special. Um, I did want to say that as you guys know, I am a travel agent, so if you are wanting to travel to Sweden or you want to see the Northern Lights and go dog sledding, maybe you're not sure if Sweden's the best place for you to do it, please reach out to me. Um, I have an inquiry form in the uh, description below here, whatever you call that. <laughs> um, so go ahead, reach out. I would love to help you plan your trip if you have just no idea where to start or maybe you have flights booked, but don't really know how to get around all the bookings and stuff or what's a viable company or where to stay, how to get at a bubble hotel, all that stuff. Please, please, please reach out to me. I'm here for you. I am your designated travel agent, travel designer on YouTube. So please feel free to reach out to me. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment. Have you ever been to Sweden? Is it your dream to stay in a bubble house? Let me know. I want to know all the things. So please tell me. I try and respond to everybody who leaves a comment um, just because I appreciate you guys so much. So please let me know what you think. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Um, all that good stuff. So talk to you soon. Bye.